I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall discuss about the fuels of both SI and CI engines. We have seen that in internal combustion engine chemical energy which is remaining stored within the fuel is converted to the internal energy of the gas inside the combustion chamber and then that internal energy of the gas combustion gases rather is converted to the mechanical energy which is available at the crank shaft. So, this energy conversion we have discussed that the chemical energy is converted to internal energy of the gas and that internal energy is converted to mechanical energy and that is available at the crank shaft. Now, issue is fuel is needed because our objective is to get some mechanical energy at the crank shaft and to get that energy what we have understood is that we need to supply fuel. So, if we talk about fuel of internal combustion engines we shall discuss now the generic you know aspects of the fuels which is used in both SI and CI engines. So, if we write fuels so this fuels you know may be solid I mean fuels are solid liquid and gaseous fuels. So, internal combustion, internal combustion engine can be operated using solid fuel, can be operated using gaseous fuel, also can be operated using liquid fuels. So, the fuels are classified into three different categories solid, liquid and gaseous fuel. So, now issue is if we use solid fuel for the internal combustion engine there are a few issues what are those so use of solid fuel presents a few issues like we need to have complicated injection system and also the removal of solid residue or ash so if we are focusing on the solid fuels then for solid fuels we have seen that complicated or complex injection system and removal of uh, residue or S. Considering these two difficulties solid fuels are not recommended for the internal combustion engine. Then if we talk about gaseous fuels for the gaseous fuel most important problem is the storage because we need to have a large tank to store such you know fuel and this is not only associated with the initial cost but also you know that for to, to, to accommodate such a big or large tank 
it is also very difficult. So, for the gaseous fuel issue is problem is associated with the storage of fuel and for that we need storage of fuel needs bulk tank. So, it is it is not so easy, but at the same time we also look at the you know favorable aspects of this particular fuel if we use for the internal combustion engine. So, let say for example, if we talk about transportation vehicle. So, accommodating such a big tank in such a vehicle is not so easy, because it will consume a large space and that too it will be bulky. So, uh, to carry that uh, you know that may be over and above the you know uh, if we talk about transportation vehicles. So, basically over and above the goods engine also need to carry the load of that particular tank, but favorable, favorable aspects are you know that if we use gaseous fuel you know that it is it is providing an important advantage of starting and distribution of the fuel, because gaseous fuel is having low inertia. So, it can be easily transported from the storage tank to the you know uh, combustion chamber, it has less inertia. So, distribution is quite easy, but at the same time we also should be careful to make it to the to, 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 to make all the you know uh, fuel line leak free. Sometimes gaseous fuel can be liquefied under high pressure. So, gaseous fuel, why you are talking about gaseous fuel? You know that gaseous fuels, I will be coming to this particular aspect later in this class. Gaseous fuels are sometimes available in plenty from both natural and you know even they can be manufactured. So, natural different natural sources also they can be manufactured, but so if we are trying to use gaseous fuel, then perhaps we need to you know make it liquid. So, the gaseous fuels or gaseous fuel can be liquidified under high pressure, but the process associated process is highly you know uh, I mean it is costlier. So, it is also not recommended. So, next is the liquid fuel. So, liquid fuel you know that basically we can use gasoline. So, those are basically obtained from crude petroleum. So, gasoline though concerning with the you know distribution of the liquid fuel is not easy as easy as the gaseous fuel or gas uh, gaseous fuel is having because it is having inertia to. So, we need to have some kind of pumping mechanism to have a proper distribution of the liquid fuel using fuel line and that should be you know uh, transported to the combustion chamber. Gasoline you know that uh, mostly SI engines gasoline is used for the SI engines and this gasoline which is basically a mixture of hydrocarbon several hydrocarbon components. So, this gasoline if I now come to this particular topic that is liquid fuel or gasoline. So, this is mixture of several hydrocarbon components right. So, we can see that there are many hydrocarbons which is present in the which are present in the uh, gasoline. Now, it is convenient to, to, to you know categorize 
them into different families depending on the arrangement of hydrogen and carbon atom in their molecular structure. So, the gasoline which is obtained this is obtained from crude petroleum this is obtained from crude petroleum and this this it contains you know several hydrocarbons uh, hydrocarbon components rather that i have talked about so petroleum as i told you that it is having several components so it is it is you know desirable to you know categorize them into different families based on the arrangement of hydrogen and carbon atom in their molecular structure and there are five such families so what i had what i have mentioned now that it is desirable to categorize them into different families and this categorization is based on the arrangement of hydrogen and carbon atom in their molecular structure so there are five such families right so So, I have written over here that categorized into different families based on the arrangement of hydrogen and carbon in molecule and uh, there are five families. So, now these families are is very important now to discuss one is paraffin, number two is olefin. number 3 is you know diolefin which is also very important number 4 is which is very important naphthen and 5 is aromatic component compound So, these all are having all these are having you know different chemical structures. So, we need to you know recall a little bit of chemistry that we have learned in our 10 plus 2 course. So, paraffin is the generic chemical formula is C n H 2 n plus 2. So, if I write in using different uh, uh, color this is olefin is C n H 2 n diolefin is C n H 2 n minus 2. So, this is C n H 2 n minus 2 this is C n H 2 n that is naphthen and aromatic is C n H 2 n minus 6 that we have studied. So, basically I have tried to write the generic the, 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 the chemical formula rather the chemical formula of all these families. So, let us briefly discuss about all these 
five families and which one is suitable for which type of engine. So, this is uh, now we should discuss. So, if we start with paraffin, so this is C n H 2 n plus 2, right. So, this is normal paraffin. So, this is uh, normal paraffin and example is say C 4 H 10. So, C 4 H 10. What we can see from this particular structure is this. the valence of all carbon atom is totally utilized. So, this is not unsaturated, this is saturated and this is also stable. So, valence of each carbon atom, all valence I mean we, we can see that uh, are utilized right. So, the valence of each carbon atom is fully utilized the valence of each carbon atom is fully utilized, there is no double bond. So, this is saturated and also very stable. So, this is I am writing saturated because there is no double bond and also very stable. These paraffins are mostly used for the CI engine. normal paraffins are used or preferable for CI engine. Why so? We shall be discussing soon. So, this is normal paraffin and if we are coming to this is 1, this is 2, if we discuss about olefin. And this is C say C n H 2 n. Example is C 4 H 8. And if we look at the you know molecular structure, then it is like this. right. So, this is butane C 4 H 8 that is a butane is a common example, but if we just compare with this particular compound with the normal with, with normal paraffin, we can see that there is a double one. So, you know that uh, it is because of this presence of double one, it is unsaturated at not stable as paraffin is. So, this is I am writing. So, this is unsaturated because double one is there. So, valence of each carbon atom is not fully utilized. We can have we have one double one over here. So, unsaturated and unstable, right. So, this is the olefin. All these gasolines are used for both SI and CI engines, but I had written over here that normal paraff normal paraffins are you know recommended or used for CI engines. Why it is so? I will be coming later. So now if we go to the diolefin, just to 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 draw the you know molecular structure, and then uh, we will be going to the uh, so this is diolefin. What is the chemical formula C n H 2 n minus 2 say C 4 H 6 right. 
butadiene. So, this is called butadiene, right? And if we uh, uh, that is um, if we write it, so for the olefin we have taken an example like butane, for this is butadiene. I am not going to discuss details about you know chemistry. So, if we draw the you know their chemical structure, if we look at then we will be fine. So, this is hydrogen right. Now, so it is essentially having two double bonds we can see from the structure. So, it is even more unsaturated than olefin and even more unstable so, right. So, this is highly unsaturated and this compound or hydrocarbon is highly unsaturated and unstable. It is so unstable that it may lead to even gun deposit during storage. So, it is so unstable even it is not required any kind of you know pressure temperature even in the in the storage tank itself it will dissociate and it, it, it leads to gun deposit. And then, so this is 3, 4 is naphthene. So, this is C n H 2 n, we can take one example that is C 5 H 10, say C 5 H 10 right. This is called cyclopentane. So, we will be drawing the molecular structure. So, this is butadiene, this is cyclopentane and structure is like this. right. This is ring structure cyclo pentane and we cannot see any double one valence of each carbon atom is again is utilized. So, it is stable as well as saturated. Okay. Next is last one that is aromatic chemical formula is C n H 2 n minus 6 say that is benzene ring C 6 H 6 right. So, we had studied about this particular ring in our 10 plus 2 course. Right. So, This is also ring structure. Now, maybe we can see there are three double bonds. So, if we have discussed about, we have already discussed about that the presence of double bond leads to unsaturation and makes the compound unstable. 
if that is the case, then here we can see there are three double bonds. So, this particular compound or hydrocarbon would be even more unstable and more unsaturated, but it is not like this. While double bond while double bond you know indicates unsaturation But the peculiar nature of these bonds of these you know bonds, how many bonds double bonds are there? Three peculiar nature of these bonds causes this family more stable more stable than the other unsaturated family than other unsaturated families. Okay. A typical example is benzene and these aromatics are mostly used for the SI engines. These are not preferred for the CI engines, but this aromatics or this particular structure, I mean hydrocarbon family is suitable, much more suitable for the SI engines. Okay. So, we have talked about all this. Now, I would like to write a few uh, rather draw a few important conclusion that we have you know studied uh, in today's uh, until now, uh, in today's class, until now in today's class. So, we have discussed about five different families, paraffin, olefin, diolefin, naphthane and benzene aromatic. We had we had taken uh, one example and we had seen that uh, all these you know uh, hydrocarbons are having you know different characteristic. So, if we would like to write a few general characteristics. a few general characteristics exhibited by these families. Families due to their molecular structure due to their molecular structure are written below. First of all, for CI engine, normal paraffin are better fuel and aromatics are least desirable. And, 
aromatics are uh, least desirable. are not desirable. Why? See you know I had discussed that normal paraffins if we try to recall their molecular structure I mean we have to go back to the previous slide and we can see this is highly saturated and high stable. So, that is why these are you know used for CI engines. If we use them for the SI engine, you know SI engine we had seen that we need to have some kind of you know external agent to ignite it. So, we are not going to utilize, we are not going to utilize the self ignition properties of the fuel, instead we are using external agent like spark plug to ignite the fuel. So, and that two SI engines are having low compression ratio. So, at that compression ratio it is very difficult to have, I mean dissociation is not so easy of the hydrogen carbon uh, between the hydrogen and carbon bond. On the other hand for the SI engine if we use some you know fuel which are uh, having some kind of unsaturation. So, maybe we can easily dissociate them. So, that is why this normal paraffins are much more suited for CI engines which are having normally high compression ratio okay. and that too because since there is no unsaturation and so at that compression ratio it is are not going to have any kind of deposition even inside the combustion chamber. Okay. Then number 2 is and the antinoch quality of the fuel when used in a SI engine appears to be poorest in normal paraffin. right. To this end aromatic offers promising you know feature. So, to this end aromatic offers you know best resistance to, de to, 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 to detonation best resistance to knock. We shall be discussing about what is knock and what is detonation later, but since the antenna quality is not very high for the normal paraffin. So, this is not used for the SI engine because in SI engines I will be discussing today that this quality is very important that is antenna quality. To this end aromatic offers the promising aspect. So, this is you know number 2 and then if we then we are writing two important very uh, uh, informative as well as the in any hydrocarbon in a hydrocarbon if the number of carbon atom increases boiling point temperature increases increases 
right. So, from this we can draw a conclusion. So, basically when we will be selecting a particular hydrocarbon for any particular type of engines, it is important to recall that if in that particular uh, in the molecular structure of that particular hydrocarbon, if the number of carbon atom is more then boiling point temperature will more. If that is the case, then the fuel will be less volatile. Okay. So, that means, uh, is very important that means, I can write over here the fuel with a fewer atom, I am writing carbon atom. carbon atom tends to be more volatile. Tend to be more volatile. And another important point that I would like to discuss now is is very important uh, particularly in this uh, type of uh, uh, discussion that you know that if H is to C, hydrogen is to carbon atom ratio increases in the hydrocarbon then so if we are using a particular fuel that is again a hydrocarbon and in that hydrocarbon if the hydrogen atom is to carbon atom ratio increases then the calorific value of fuel will be higher. This is quite common because you know that that means, the calorific value of the fuel will be higher. So, we will be getting more. So, the energy content in the within that hydrocarbon is more that is very important right. So, if the ratio of hydrogen is to carbon atom is more that it, it simply indicates that the calorific value of the fuel will be high. So, as if it is it is giving an indication that the energy contents within the fuel is more. So, we have talked about you know several uh, families as we had mentioned that gasoline is basically a mixture of several hydrocarbon components and uh, it is it is desirable to you know categorize them depending on their structure molecular structure and we could do it and we had seen that uh, selection of what selection of a particular fuel for any particular type of engine is is uh, having some arguments and that we had tried to discuss. So, now we will discuss about an important you know that point that is self ignition characteristics. So, what is self ignition characteristics is very important. Now, if we discuss about this self ignition characteristics of fuels. Definitely of the fuels because, so we have discussed about you know fuels and we had seen that which particular type of hydrocarbon is more suited for the CI engine and which one is much more suited for the SI engine. Now, what is self ignition characteristics because we need to know what is self ignition properties. So, if we try to recall in one of the previous classes we have discussed about that for the SI engine you know that we are going to have an external agent and that is the spark plug. So, at the end of the compression stroke the thermodynamic state of the 
mixture is not sufficient enough to auto ignite or self ignite. And for that we need to have a spark that would be produced by a spark plug and it would be having you know uh, an electronic circuit. So, question is if you are going to use any particular type of fuel for SI engine, why not to look at this particular property or character you know this particular self ignition property of that fuel. So, while selecting a particular type of fuel self ignition property is also equally important and that that is what should be understood. Now, so try to understand uh, on the other hand for the compression ignition engines uh, at the end of the compression stroke the I mean air is compressed and the pressure temperature inside the combustion chamber is so high that the moment when fuel is spread into the combustion chamber fuel will auto ignite or self ignite. So, from these two we can understand there is a temperature and if the temperature go if the temperature inside the uh, temperature of the gas inside the combustion chamber is beyond a threshold value then only fuel will self ignite or not. Now, we can still use some fuel which is used for the CI engine even for the SI engine and, and vice versa, but since we are not going to utilize the self ignition characteristics self ignition properties of the fuel for the CI engine for the SI engines. So, definitely if we introduce a fuel which is used for the CI engine in a SI engine you know something will be there and that part we will be discussing later when we, when we shall be discussing about the combustion uh, briefly of course. So, self ignition is self ignition temperature. So, basically uh, we need to know the temperature of the gas of the you know compressed gas whether it is compressed charge that is air fuel mixture or compressed air. If the temperature is above the particular temperature for which ignition will occur. So, the temperature at which ignition will occur is the self ignition temperature of the fuel. So, pertaining to the selection of the fuel we also need to look at this particular property of the fuel that is we need to know what is the temperature at the end of the compression stroke and if that temperature is good enough to ignite the fuel automatically or we need to introduce and you know spark uh, plug or not. So, now let us briefly write about this particular term. So, what is the self ignition temperature? So, if I write over here the definition the temperature above which above which air fuel mixture will self ignite or not. Self ignite is called the self ignition temperature. Whether it is I SI engine or CI engine even for the for the SI engine we are supplying air fuel mixture through the intake manifold, but for the CI engines we are supplying only air, but at the end of the compression stroke we are supplying fuel. So, essentially we need to ignite the air fuel mixture not only the pure fuel. So, fuel will ignite, but it will ignite the air fuel mixture because it is homogeneous mixture. So, the temperature over which, above which this air fuel mixture will self ignite is the self ignition temperature. Now, why it is so important? You know that important is 
if we do not know this particular property and we are supplying to uh, say if we consider CI engine. For the CI engine if we supply a particular fuel and if we assume that the self ignition temperature of that fuel is so high that the temperature at the end of the compression stroke is not sufficient enough to ignite the fuel. Then what will happen? Combustion will not be completed, we are not going to get enough power. So, uh, it, is, it, is, it is something not a desirable situation. So, it is very important. On the other hand, if we provide a fuel to the SI engine, rather we are supplying a particular fuel to the SI engine and if the self ignition temperature of the fuel is so less, then maybe before we switch on this power plug, the fuel will self ignite. And if that fuel will self ignite, then what will happen you know that there will be a chaotic rise in pressure inside the combustion chamber and that particular situation will lead to the development something uh, you know uh, uh, abrupt pressure as well as audible noise and that is the knock. So, self ignition temperature is equally important for both the engines. If it is the fuel which is being supplied to the SI engine, if that particular fuel is having low self ignition temperature or SIT, I am writing over here this SIT, then the fuel will ignite even before we switch on the spark plug and what will happen you know that it is because of this when the switch spark plug switch is on a main flame front will come from the spark plug area while because of this low self ignition temperature fuel which is there even on the piston face or other you know heated surface of the uh, combustion chamber secondary flames uh, will be produced and those secondary flames will collide with the primary flame front and it will you know generate huge pressure together with an audible noise and that is not desirable and that is not known as knocking. So, self ignition temperature is equally important for both the engines right for the, for the CI and SI engines. In particular it is very important for the SI engines. Now, if we try to discuss about this particular property in the context of CI engine what will happen. So, let us let us draw it now in the next uh, slide. So, if we try to draw this self ignition temperature. So, what we have understood? Uh, we have discussed about the knock which may develop that is nothing but abrupt pressure rise alongside the generation of or development of an audible noise and that may happen if the self ignition temperature of the fuel which is being supplied to SI engine is really less. So, now let us discuss about the this particular aspect in the context of CI engines. So, if we plot time, say we are using a particular fuel and that for that this is the self ignition temperature. So, this is the self ignition temperature. So, this is self ignition temperature line. So, I am writing this is uh, this is SIT and this is temperature. So, temperature versus time in this plane if we use. So, if we are we are this is compression heating right. So, this is compression heating right and this is if the self suppose you are supplying a particular fuel to the CI engine and we can see that the say if the this is compression heating. So, if we give a name if we give name say this is 1 this is 2. So, this 1 to 2 is the compression heating. Now, we can see it is because of this compression heating rise in temperature 
is so that it is even less than the self ignition temperature and it will not the fuel will not auto ignite or self ignite and it will just simply cool off. So, so combustion will not be there. If we use another fuel and if the self ignition properties of that fuel is such that even in the compression heating it it temperature will be like this right and it will. So, this is 2 prime and this is 3 this is 3. Now, so this is this is the so now this is the point 2 prime 2 prime is the self ignition so it is because of this compression heating temperature reaches at t2 prime so that is t2 prime and this t2 prime is higher than the self ignition temperature so it will now self ignite so this is self ignition point So, this is self ignition right and then this is combustion because it is because of this combustion we can see there is abrupt rise in temperature right. This particular period we can understand that this particular period so, you know that fuel will self ignite, but it will take a fraction of second time, it will take a fraction of you know a fraction of second a, fra a fraction of a second to have full combustion or efficient combustion. And this period though it is a fraction of a second it is known as ignition delay. So, this ignition delay has two components one is physical delay another one is chemical delay. Let me talk about briefly on this particular part. So, even if the temperature of the fuel or temperature of the air fuel mixture due to compression reaches at T 2 prime which is above the self ignition temperature of that particular fuel, but combustion will not start exactly at T 2 prime it will take some time and that time is a fraction of a second and combustion will eventually start at 3 and then it is uh, the temperature rises like this abrupt rise in temperature. So, this delay is known as ignition delay and it has two components one is physical delay another is chemical delay. What is chemical delay? You know chemical delay is it depends on the uh, chemical structure of the fuel uh, I mean mainly the chemical uh, chemistry of the fuel fuel chemistry. As we have talked about it depends on the number of hydrogen is to carbon atom presence of double bonds so many things. Physical delay you know that it is the uh, self ignition will start over here. Now, physical delay is that self ignition will start and we are supplying fuel using a fuel nozzle. So, it is very unlikely that when at the end of the compression stroke that is at T 2 prime. So, basically T 2 prime is the point the I mean at the end of the compression when we are supplying fuel. So, that is T 2 prime the temperature of the air fuel mixture is to uh, uh, air is T 2 if it is a CI engine and at that point we are supplying fuel. So, supplying all the fuel into the combustion chamber may take some time de depending on the uh, the functionality of the you know, nozzle depending on the efficiency of the nozzle. So, nozzle is again a mechanical device. So, it will you know uh, not be perfect as it is you know uh, under use. So, it will take certain time to spray the amount of fuel inside the it is it will take certain amount of time for spraying certain amount of fuel into the combustion chamber. So, that time is the physical delay. So, it is not very likely that momentarily all the 
uh, fuel should be supplied into the combustion chamber immediately when self ignition temperature is attained by the fuel by, by the by the air. So, it is a physical delay and chemical delay is associated with the you know kind of uh, chemistry or chemistry chemical aspects of the fuel. Accounting for these two aspects we have this ignition delay. Now, if we can somehow increase say if we if we if we increase the self ignition temperature even little more then say this is 2 double prime then we can see that self igni ignition delay is reduced. So, what we can see that higher the rise in temperature of the air, air higher the rise in temperature at the end of the compression stroke of the compressed air the shorter will be the ignition delay right. So, the higher is the rise of temperature above the self ignition temperature of the fuel shorter will be the ignition delay. If shorter is the ignition delay more efficient will be the combustion and that is much more desirable. So, what we have understood is that the self ignition temperature is very very important from the perspective of the operation of both the engines for SI and CI engines. For the SI engines this quantity is very important to prevent an undesirable phenomenon which is known as knock and if the knock is severe that will lead to detonation. On the other hand this quantity is equally important to understand the signs of combustion for the CI engines because it will give us an insight about the ignition delay. Shorter is the ignition delay, better is the performance of the engine in terms of the combustion. So, we really do not know say if we know the self ignition temperature then we can understand we can tell what would be the temperature at the end of the compression whether it is far away from this self ignition temperature. If it is even let me discuss another important or another point if it is even higher then we can see that the self igni you know, ignition delay is even getting reduced. So, basically higher the rise in temperature and rise above the self ignition temperature shorter will be the ignition delay. So, knowing this important you know property of the fuel we also can introduce rather two different or two important parameters are introduced pertaining to the operation of both SI and CI engines. Of course, while selecting a particular type of fuel and preferably rather it is it is uh, it is desirable to consider these two important parameter while selecting a particular type of fuel for the uh, operation of internal combustion engines. We shall discuss the significance we shall introduce those parameters along with we shall discuss the physical significance of these parameters in the next class. So, with this I stop here today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.